So what's the deal with canon? More to the point, what is canon when we're talking about Star Wars? There we go. I see I've gotten your attention. Star Wars canon, it's one of the most discussed, debated, and joked about subjects in pop culture geekdom today. But when did it become so important, and why does Star Wars need a new organized canon? Collider Crash Course is here to tell you all about it. Let's start with the word itself, canon. Merriam-Webster, the folks behind the best-selling book, Dictionary, describes the word as a sanctioned or accepted group or body of related works. In Star Wars, it's the reason we now call Emperor Palpatine, she Palpatine. When before he had no first name. And at one point he became a clone, but he's not anymore because that's not canon. So in other words, if it is Star Wars canon, it's part of the Star Wars universe and the gospel in the church of Lucasfilm. It is what really happened in the Star Wars story. In a real world sense, it's like reading a biography of Abraham Lincoln. That all happened. The events of Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, cool, but it didn't happen. When did the need for an organized Star Wars canon start? Well, the moment A New Hope hit theaters. From that point on, the universe was set, the lore launched, and the questions began. Partially because there were some subtle differences between the movie and the novelization released six months prior. Blue Five, anyone? Then, in addition to the 1970s Marvel Comics line, two pieces of Star Wars material set outside the movies arrived before Empire Strikes Back. The Alan Dean Foster novel, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, and the Star Wars Holiday Special, they both raised the important questions like the nature of Luke and Leia's relationship, and whether or not Chewie was going to get back home to celebrate Life Day. But by the time Return of the Jedi hit theaters, nothing in Splinter of the Mind's Eye counted, especially the romantic tension between Luke and Leia. And George Lucas himself wiped away the holiday special. Sorry, Lumpy, Chewbacca's not your dad anymore. Get lost. By 1979, the Han Solo Adventures novel series and later the adventures of Lando Calrissian expanded the universe even more. And yes, of course, so did the TV movies based around the Ewoks and their new friend Sindel. And man, that Gorax is still pretty scary. But the focus was still what was on screen in the theaters, A New Hope. Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. That's what counted. Everything else was fun, icing on the Star Wars cake, but not part of the main course. Then, two things happened that moved the Star Wars universe closer to where we are now. In 1987, West End Games created the Star Wars role-playing game, and the need to know every little piece of information became downright important. The makers of the game identified countless planets, ships, characters that had been previously left in the wild with no identity. For example, soon after the game's launch, Walrus Man became Ponda Baba, but he still doesn't like you. I don't like you either. Then in 1991, Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire novel was published by Bantam Books, starting his Thrawn trilogy, the so-called continuation of the Star Wars saga following the events of Return of the Jedi. What came after this successful series of books was an absolute explosion of Star Wars novels, games, comics. Yes, Star Wars had never left, but it was bigger than ever. The Star Wars universe had clearly expanded. While George Lucas himself has said in interviews that he thought of there being two different Star Wars universes, his and then everything else, Lucasfilm did see a need to get a handle on the Star Wars saga at large. There was just so much information out there. Thus six levels of canon were introduced. All of this information was tracked and maintained in an internal database referred to as the Holocron, itself a reference to the mysterious cubes the Jedi used to store their information. Leland Chi, a longtime Lucasfilm employee, is the keeper of the Holocron. Basically, he was the man in charge, keeping track of the wealth of information. However, even then, it was easy to get confused. The Solo Twins, Mara Jade, and Grand Admiral Thrawn were memorable. But what about the events of the courtship of Princess Leia? Did the Force Unleashed tell the true story of the beginning of the Rebellion? And what happened to clone Luke Skywalker? You know, the one spelled Luke. The extra U makes him evil. There was just so much, and with every moment and characters seemingly getting their own place in the Star Wars expanded universe, it would be hard for Lucasfilm to move forward with new stories which, for a long time, no one thought that would happen. Then, 
it did. Disney bought Lucasfilm in 2012 and announced a plan to make new movies. Wild fan speculation began about what parts of the expanded universe would now make the big screen. Well, it turns out, none of it. Kind of. Lucasfilm announced plans to retcon the Star Wars universe. Call this the Great Lucasfilm Purge. Now, everything before April 25th, 2014, not counting the second Clone Wars animated series, and the Dark Horse comic series Darth Maul, Son of Dathomir, is no longer canon. Anything after that stands with the movies as official Star Wars canon. The old expanded universe became legends. This doesn't mean those stories don't exist. Doesn't mean you still can't enjoy them. It just means that the backstory on Max Rebo taking a lifetime contract to play at Jabba's palace in exchange for an unlimited supply of food, it no longer counts, paving the way for a Max Rebo standalone movie. Yes. This grand retconning also saw the aforementioned levels of canon undergo some reshaping courtesy of the Lucasfilm story group as Lucasfilm president. Kathleen Kennedy wanted the hierarchy of canon to be replaced by one cohesive level. Vice President Kerry Hart helped form this group, which currently includes Leland Chi, Rain Roberts, Carrie Beck, Diana Williams, and Pablo Hidalgo, along with Kerry Hart. Hidalgo is the one who's in the spotlight most often, and most of his day revolves around trying to avoid 12,000 Twitter questions about Star Wars canon. Guys, give him a break. This retconning was needed. With new Star Wars movies, books, and other materials on the way, Lucasfilm needed the ability to control all of the new stories and be completely uninhibited in telling the stories. For all the amazing, interesting, and fun things that the expanded universe brought us, Thrawn, Dash Rendar, the Dark Empire series, it had become a bit unwieldy. With thousands of stories, characters, and worlds out there, Lucasfilm would have had a tough time mapping out the saga going forward. And if they didn't wipe the cannon clean, Chewbacca would have been killed by a moon! That's stupid. Chewbacca would have been dead. But he's not dead. Now he's back. And he's back with Rey, and Finn, and Poe, Kylo Ren, Admiral Radis, and a wide opening future for the Star Wars saga. In future episodes, we will dive more into Star Wars canon, covering things that we still miss that haven't made the move yet from Legends to canon. Some things that we're quite frankly glad that were lost, and maybe even the whereabouts of Jackson the Rabbit X-Wing pilot. There certainly is a lot of canon to cover in the Star Wars universe, so stay tuned to Collider Crash Course, and we'll take you through it. Hello, my name is Shave, and you should watch this. Don't, don't, oh, this one, that's...